Hey everyone, what is going on? I hurt my back last week, so that's why there was only like a little driving video. Starting to feel better. Not able to really work on the car yet. But um, like the video title says, I wanted to cover this topic and I wanted to talk about push button starts. Um, for me, I think they're just a sales gimmick um, because I mean, you still have to carry basically a key, whether it's just a fob or an actual key or chipped key or whatever. You still have to carry something. You still have to physically start the car. Um, but recently, you know, I, I never thought of the security of them um, until recently, just last week, a friend of mine, his uncle had bought a new truck. It came with a push start. They took it to a chain place that's known for doing undercoating and window tinning. And when they got the truck back, there was some shady employee there that put some device on the OBD2 port. And basically this device made the truck mimic a key fob. And whether they could use their phone or another part of that device wirelessly, basically it was GPS, it plugged in the OBD2 and they could come find the truck, unlock the truck and drive it off and steal it. And I mean, this was told to them by uh, the local um, auto theft police, uh, their, the unit. Um, they basically told them if, if you didn't find the device when you came home and it fell out from under the dash, um, they would have came and took the truck and it would have been gone because newer vehicles will get shipped overseas and, and sold elsewhere in other countries. Um, and when that came up, you know, I was talking to other people and basically came up with a couple other stories where, um, you know, key fobs were left at home and, you know, they drove out somewhere and realized it was gone and had to hurry up and drive back and get it. Or um, one was an uh, in-law friend. They had bought a new pre-owned certified vehicle. The dealership salesman went out and warmed up the vehicle for them. And they left. But the salesman never gave them the key fob. So a little inconvenience. The salesman had to go out and give it to them. And then uh, once we were talking about the truck being, all, being almost stolen, uh, we found out that a friend had a Hyundai and basically he went to the mall and, you know, local mall here and just parked his car, locked it as he was walking away. Well, someone had some sort of device that was able to capture the signal, whether they had to be close to him or however it worked. And basically they went and took his vehicle for a joyride, whether they were just testing their device or maybe something about the car made it unique that they didn't want to keep it. They ended up ditching the car. So after it was reported stolen, they found it abandoned in an alleyway. But, um... Yeah, so I mean that's that that just makes me think even more that the push button is just a gimmick because it doesn't really add any more security. I mean basically anyone will try to steal anything, but you know, I I think in my opinion a chipped key is probably the hardest to uh vehicle to steal because one, I mean anyone could hotwire standard ignition, but then you have to account for the immobilizer on the car. And I don't really I mean, I'm sure there's a device to get around immobilizers, whether it's somehow copying a factory key or, or something. There's obviously ways around doing it. But that just kind of shows me that a push button is still just, you know, just kind of a gimmick. Because, I mean, you got to carry it around. you got to carry around a fob anyway, just like you would a key. you still got to start it, whether it's turning the initiative or pushing a button. And um, the other thing is servicing it. So when you have... You have a module, you know, that now if it goes bad, you have to take it probably to a dealer or someone that specializes or has special equipment to reprogram those uh, receivers to the transponder you have and, and diagnose all that stuff. When in the past, you know, you could get, you know, say, say your car's not starting, find out it's a switch on the back of the ignition tumbler. You can replace that switch. I've done it on work vans. Not that hard to do. Or let's say it's not recognizing the transponder. Well, normally there's just a little ring that goes around the ignition barrel that, you know, then it, that, you know, maybe it's bad. You can just replace it. So obviously, you know, dealers want more work for themselves. So that makes either small garages not able to do it or buy specialized equipment to do it. So that's tough to think about. I know my brother-in-law bought the same truck. And that still comes with the standard ignition. The push start is a option. So for me, I think I'll always keep a standard key as long as I can. 
you know, chipped key and avoid push starts as to uh, my opinion. But uh, let me guys know what you think. Um, leave comments below with any stories you might have or issues or more details on how these devices that they use to steal vehicles like copy keys and that would work. But um, yeah, I, I don't think a push button's any safer. Secure, I mean. And um, as far as like, you know, I got a remote start on the caliber here. Um, my cousin, he actually bought, I think last year it was his 2017 GTI DSG, you know, and he wanted a remote start, but that vehicle comes with a push start. So even the dealership told him that they would not recommend putting a push start on it or a remote start on a push start because of the way they'd have to do it. Basically, if you remote started the car, the remote start is copying already the fob so basically, if your doors are unlocked and someone gets in it and drives away, that's it. Because the remote start mimics the key fob, so it'll start the car. Um, I'm sure that now there's ways that push start vehicles can be remote start, but it, it just kind of seems like another hassle. It still seems kind of gimmicky. And um, for me, I'm just going to keep carrying a key. So like and subscribe. Till next time.